your questions answered, and my two cents worth on the recent ARRL petition to the FCC. Keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. Well, do you enjoy interesting and entertaining amateur radio videos? And is this your first time here? Then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the little bell to be notified when future videos are released. Well, thanks for enjoying and indulging me and taking the time to watch the last few videos on digital mobile radio, or DMR. Uh, DMR is one of the hot new VHF, UHF did, uh, modes, and it's really gaining popularity due to the... Um, the wide availability of inexpensive uh, DMR handheld radios. But it's not without its challenges. DMR is really a commercial standard and it's not necessarily suited for amateur use. But ham radio operators are a real resourceful bunch and, I, and um, they've figured out how to really make it work. So I encourage you to check out DMR if you're interested in digital radio. Of the three videos, uh, the third on the DMR hotspots seems to be the most popular. I'd like to thank Mike, KC9ZJF, for giving me the guidance on the Raspberry Pi and Pi Star combo. He's been running uh, this, this combination for his hotspot on D-Star for quite some time now, and his advice, his advice on it was greatly appreciated. Uh, but from the video, I did receive this one question. Uh, did not notice in the video if you mentioned the range this hotspot has. Well, I didn't mention range at all uh, because that can be a bit subjective. The, the, the hotspot transceiver is only about 10 milliwatts, and I'm using a duck antenna and an old, from an old HT, um, and my hotspot sits on about the first level of my home. So um, with that being said, I can get about 500 feet with this combination. Uh, a little bit further than that, I start to hear dropouts. Now this is in a residential neighborhood, so if it was clear space, I'm sure I would get uh, more distance. So I'm gonna say about 500 feet is really an acceptable distance for this device. And how to code a DM, uh, how to create a DMR code plug, uh, Benjamin writes, have you checked out the Chicagoland network of DMR repeaters? I think there's one in your neck of the woods and there are a lot more talk groups without the hassle of connecting to reflectors. Well, when I made the video, I hadn't tried the Chicagoland system yet, but since I had the chance to check it out, Chicagoland um, and Chicagoland is, is on the Brandmeister system, and they, they treat talk groups a little bit different than uh, how, what DMR Plus does. So I found out, that, so the nice thing is, is that you don't have to connect to a reflector per se. You know, you, all you need to do on, on a Brandmeister system is really just change the talk group, Transmit and bingo, uh, you're talking. So yes, the Chicagoland system is very nice, and thanks for the recommendation. It's, I, really, I really enjoyed it. I guess thanks in a small part to Motorola, who has their headquarters in the Chicago area, because Chicago and uh, the North Shore of Lake Michigan seem to have a prolific amount of DMR repeaters. So as the next time I travel down to Milwaukee, who knows, you might hear me on the air. Also, from that video, I received a couple comments concerning an error I made in uh, programming the off offset in my repeater channel. If you watch closely, I entered a 6 megahertz offset instead of a 5 megahertz one. I'll be the first to admit I'm not a, I'm not a whiz at math. Uh, in college, I took a foreign language instead of calculus. So, uh, thanks for the observant few who caught my error. In my first DMR video, which was the review of the Redivis RT82, uh, the most comments I received were on the trackball of the radio. One per person mentioned, the only reason I'm not interested is because of the scrollball. And another comment mentioned, this radio reminds me of the TYT MD2017. It took me a while to get used to the trackball. Well, after using this radio, I'm not totally sold on the, on the trackball idea. Uh, here in northern Wisconsin, it's still winter, and my hands, you know, they're, they're still consistently dry. And plus, if I'm wearing gloves or something, I, I'm, not, I'm unable to really operate that trackball. So the good news is, is that you can remap the side buttons and the top button to, to handle almost all of the features that the trackball offers. And so you can, you can almost avoid using it completely. Another problem I've had with the trackball is um, I tend to bump it and change channels or whatnot uh, when it's on my belt or, or, or whatnot. But the Redivis has a really nice um, keyboard locking function. Uh, 
You can set an automatic keyboard, you can uh, automatic keypad lock uh, for, with a timer between 5 and 15 seconds, and um, that solves that problem completely. It's a really nice feature. I wish more radios had something like that. Well, thanks for all of those questions. I really appreciate them. Please keep them coming. Now for something a little bit different. You may have seen uh, the recent uh, article about the ARRL uh, asking the FCC to expand HF privileges for technician license holders. I recommend you read the entire article, but the link, the link is down below in the video description. But in a nutshell, the petition asks for limited uh, phone privileges on 75, 40, and 15 meters, plus RTTY and digital mode privileges on 80, 40, 15, and 10 meters. This is a result of the recommendations put forth by the ARRL's board entry-level license committee. Okay, I get what the ARRL is doing here. The modern technician license is an amalgamation of the old technician and old novice licenses. So the current technician exam is really HF heavy and the amount of uh, meaningful HF privileges you receive for a technician is quite small. Adding HF phone and digital to the uh, technician license would bring a license class in line uh, to, the, what, to the common expectations of what HF is. You know, face it, CW on 15, 40, and 80 meters is not really enticing to text on, on HF. With that being said, you know, there's two choices here. Either the technician exam needs to be simplified to reflect the actual use of the license class, or as the ARRL proposes, techs should have phone and digital on those bands that have traditionally offered novice access. So, with that said, I'm going to go along with the league on this one and throw my support towards expanding technician uh, HF privileges. But now don't hold your, head, your breath on this petition. You know, the, these petitions are made to the FCC all the time and uh, more often than not, they're either dismissed or they just don't gain any traction. So uh, the current FCC leadership, I don't think really has much of an interest in amateur radio and I don't see this issue going anywhere at all. So what are your thoughts? Should the technicians be offered expanded phone and um, digital privileges on HF? Why or why not? I'd love to hear your comments, so please leave them below. Finally, coming up is my long-awaited review of the Wolf River Coil Silver Bullet 1000. I've been, I've been using this coil for the last two months and I'm really starting to form an opinion. In fact, um, well, it's still winter here, so, this coil, so my uh, tripod in the backyard is going nowhere. It's frozen to the ground. But uh, this coming Sunday, March 11th, is the annual Wisconsin QSO party. So I'll be on the air with the coil. And if you're around Sunday, take a listen for my call sign, KB9VBR. Uh, depending on conditions, I'll be on 40 and 20 meters phone primarily uh, during the day. And uh, I'll drop down to 75 in the evening um, as it gets a little bit darker. Full details and rules on the QSO party can be found on the West Dallas Radio Amateur Club's website, www.warac.org. Well, as always, if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Check out um, the little suggested video that popped up alongside me, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below me if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. I would really appreciate it. That's it for this episode of Ham Radio q and I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73.